Hey guys, it's Amy with 804 Sycamore, and I picked up this uh, vintage SETI on Facebook Marketplace, and I actually loved the faded um, olive chartreuse color, but it had some stains. Um, it had a little minor wear and tear, <clears throat> nothing I was concerned about, but um, I thought about painting it, and the problem with painting is it usually leaves a crunchy exterior. So I decided to dye this sofa um, and dye is relatively inexpensive. And so I went ahead and I used the Bissell little green machine. It's a portable carpet and upholstery cleaner and I let it totally dry. And then I decided to tape up the legs with painter's tape and wrap them with plastic. Now I had good intentions, but um, spraying the dye on this sofa, it just, it, it um, oozed in there. Um, and so maybe I should have done a better job taping the seams, um, but uh, be careful. I, in hindsight, I probably should have just left it off and then wiped them after spraying. So to get your dye ready, you're going to bring your water up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and make sure you wear some protective gloves. You are working with dye. Now, I went to Ritz website and I found this formula for this beautiful green color. And so I got the, the three colors that were required. Now I used two full cups of the dye, um, one and a half of the green and then a fourth of a cup of each of the gray tones. And that made up two cups of dye. Now I mixed that with two gallons of water. That was my ratio. Now the most important part about this is not getting the exact dye measurements, but really giving your dye a good shake because you, there's gonna be sediment on the bottom. So I used a candy thermometer and as soon as I got the water almost boiling, I, I, it needs to get to 200. Once it hits 200, it's ready to go. I turned off the heat, um, got it ready to go. So since you've already mixed your dye, you can just go ahead and add it to the almost boiling water. And I just um, scooped up some water in my measuring cup to get every last little bit of dye. And then I used a stainless steel spoon. Uh, make sure you're using a stainless steel pot because the dye will go ahead and stain. And so I just gave it a nice good stir. Now. I set up this area in our garage. Um, I decided to use my paint sprayer because that seemed like the most efficient and quickest method that I had read about. And it was, it was incredibly easy and fast. Um, I ended up moving this whole operation you see, cause I brought out the big stainless steel pot with all my dye. Um, I ended up just putting it on the grass for the second coat. So. Save yourself some time. Dye is going to get on your grass. It didn't damage or kill any of my grass. So um, hopefully you have the same luck. But it's very hot liquid because you don't want it to cool down. And so you can't tell, but it's pretty hot on my hand here. And so I quickly um, screwed it on. Now, ag again, this setup is on plastic. And that was totally pointless too. All the dye on the plastic ends up going onto the grass. So my second coat looked way different. I just went ahead and sprayed directly onto the grass. Now I would say this process is so easy with the sprayer. You get a nice even spray, but the most annoying part is you run through the, the dye pretty quickly. And so every time I ran out, I'd have to go and fill it again. So that's not a big deal, but that was probably the part that took the longest. So what I'm doing is with this SETI, it has um, some buttons and folded fabric. And so I really had to go through on the second coat and really pull the fabric, move it and really spray in there. Otherwise, if someone sat down and, and it pulled at a seam, you would be able to see the original color. So just make sure that you're, when you're spraying, you're getting in all those nooks and crannies. I will go ahead and link to my sprayer and other supplies. And here is one coat. Now I did not record the second coat because it's more of spraying, but the, I just needed two coats. Some people may need three coats 
and then I just ran a bunch of water through my paint sprayer to clean it out and it even though the green stained um, the white plastic it totally ran clear very quickly and so I feel really good about that and I would definitely recommend using a spray gun to dye a upholstered furniture. Now once I sprayed on the first coat you have to make sure it's completely dry. You can't just keep adding more dye and dye. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. It's not going to retain or soak up more and get you the darker color. So first coat, let it completely dry. Second coat, let it completely dry. However many coats, allow it to completely dry. Once it is completely dry, then I added the Rit Color Fixative. And I did a light spray, but as you could see, I used five bottles. Now they're only about three dollars and something cents at Target and Walmart um, and so it's it's a very inexpensive process to get the dye to um, not bleed on your clothes you know if, if if the sofa were to get wet the dye doesn't reactivate this really just sets the dye and um, and it solidifies the color now some people do two coats some people add water if you read Ritz website, they say just spray it directly onto furniture. You don't, it's not like um, if you had clothing that you would put into the stainless steel pot. No, you, you don't need to add any water. And I'm just kind of rubbing it on by hand, um, making sure it gets nice and even all over it. All right, so after the color fixative dries, you can sit on your furniture, you can use it, and I absolutely love the transformation that some um, simple dye did to this um, set vintage settee. It was in really great shape. Now some of the dye did get on my legs of the sofa, and so I'm going to go ahead and strip those and do kind of a vintage refinish on those. You can see it's a little green there because some of the original stain was already wearing off and so the wood was exposed but um, I absolutely love the way it turned out and I would say when it comes to dyeing furniture you can't go lighter because dyeing isn't like painting it's not like painting a black wall white um, you're going to have to use darker colors you can't paint I mean you can't spray dye a red sofa green it's just going to turn brown so you have to give it some thought it's probably better to go um, the original color or shades darker or you can obviously do black um, but you're, you're not going to be able to go lighter unless it's a white piece of furniture maybe you could do pink or orange or peach or something but anyways love this process it was super easy and I highly recommend it mm -hmm.